Gervonta Tank Davis is one of boxing's biggest stars and a stone cold knockout artist. But top contender and trash talk champion Rolando Roli Romero wants his shot. I'm a knock tank out and as simple as that. On May 28th. That's all you do is talk. Davis versus Romero for the 135 pound world title, Saturday, May 28th, live on pay per view. Hoops fans, we got a can't-miss offer from our friends at DraftKings Sportsbook. All new customers can throw down $5 on any basketball team to win and get $150 in free bets if the pick hits. That's 30-1 to 1 odds on any team to get a win. Go take advantage of this amazing offer while you can. DraftKings Sportsbook customers can also bet on the NBA with same-game parlays. Piece together multiple bets from the same game. The more legs you add, the more money you can win. Matt and I are running an All the Smoke parlay every week for the rest of the playoffs. Stay tuned later this week to see who we're riding with. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use the promo code SMOKE. Bet just $5 on any pro basketball team and get $150 in free bets if they win. That's promo code SMOKE at DraftKings Sportsbook. Lil Tunchi had a tweet that read, and I quote, Luca a hoe. He was actually courtside yesterday to watch that fish fry that Luca put on them Phoenix boys. He sat there and watched that, uh, that fish fry like a man. Oh. Mm. <laughs> Luca needs to send uh, Wayne a jersey autographed <laughs> from hoe. From hoe. <laughs> Welcome back to What's Burning, Jack. You're in L.A. still, bro. How are you? Huh? Oh, yeah, I'm trying to shake it off, man. I had a good time at the fight, man. I had a good weekend with the prayers, man. So uh, I'm just trying to reboot, man, and get myself back together. I don't know why I'm, if I'm going or coming right now. <laughs> well, you know we got to do this goddamn show right now, so let's get to it, man. <laughs> Probably the biggest stunner in the playoffs thus far, the Dallas Mavericks smacked the shit out of the Phoenix Suns. Lil Tunchi. Friend of the program, one of our favorites, had a tweet that read, and I quote, Luca a ho, just H O. Mm. He was actually courtside yesterday to watch that fish fry that Luca put on them Phoenix boys. Thoughts on the tweet, thoughts on him being courtside, and just how much it makes this the, the game better. Well, I mean, you know, when Luke when Luca fish frying like that, the only thing you can do is get some tartar sauce and join in and try to enjoy it. <laughs> I think Tunchi, you know, he loyal to CP. They go way back when CP was playing in New Orleans. Yeah. Even, you know, when when um, Term and all them, they all real cool. So I think he, he, he just loyal to CP, you know, win or lose. But he sat there and watched that, uh, that fish fry like a man. Um, mm. You know, it, 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 it was – I mean, that's all he could. That's all he could do. Right. He called Luke right. Oho. One thing I know about Luke is he liked that type stuff. He liked to step yeah. up and shut people up and – and make those faces when he hit a three. So, but it was good to see for yeah. Luca, man. I uh, I think Nate told me I had I had the um, the Mavs uh, winning. Nice. Luca needs to send uh, Wayne a jersey, autographed <laughs> from Ho. From Ho. <laughs> so let's get to the game, man. Luca scored the first eight points. Never looked back. The starters had just 15 points combined in the first half. Suns 27 at half. Luka Doncic. 27 at half, uh, had 27 at half. Jack, what happened with this game, man? Man, you know, I just think, like, everybody is not meant for those big moments, bro. Everybody's not meant to step up and make shots and make plays in those big moments. I think Dallas was the more confident team uh, going into this game seven. They, they they played more free the rest of the game. And Luka was the best player on the court. And that's, and that's your best player. If you were the best player on the court at the time, and you're the best player on the team, and they call you one of the best players in the league, that's what you do. You take over mm -hmm. games, especially on the road. I said that whoever's going to win this uh, series is going to win a game on the road. And game seven was the perfect game for Dallas to win on the road. I mean, Luka was incredible. Uh, and shout out Jay Kidd, too, man. He, had, he, he got these dudes together, and you could tell they had a different energy about them. Probably actually after they lost the first two, they started, you know, he was talking about who else was coming to the show, and then they, they, they started really getting active on defense. Spencer Dinwiddie uh, had a terrible, you know, we're going to call it what it is, a, a terrible series, but stepped up big and had uh, hit four or five threes, uh, had 21 in the first half. What he, I think he ended up with 30, if I'm not mistaken. And Eric, in my ear, told me they're only the third 
duo in Game 7 history to both drop 30. The other two uh, duos are Kobe and Shaq and Kale and Bird. So that's great uh, company. I knew it had to be some, some type of Boston Celtics something in there. Legend. I just yeah, knew that's it. why, he, that's why he gave it to us. Yeah, yes, he, he probably yeah, wouldn't even said it if it was like MJ and it, Pippen and, right, and someone right. else. Yeah. <laughs> Book and CP. Only had 21 points combined in Game 7. Talk to me just about this. I mean, CP's game, that's my guy, but his Game 7 record now, he's 0-7 in his last seven Game 7s. Uh, talk to me about him and Book just not stepping up and just, d- does this damage CP's legacy? I wouldn't say damage his legacy. He's done so much for the game of basketball. He's done so many great things, but he's not a champion. I mean, that's all you can really say. You know, he's not a champion yet. Um, I think... For him and Booker, Booker needs another star, a younger star, to take some of that load off. Because, you know, you got you got to think, Booker game is really um, dependent on his jumper. He don't really get to the basket like that. He don't really post up. He don't really make plays for people like that, especially when CP on the court. So I just think it was just too much pressure on him. He carried the team a lot this year. And the moment, the moment was too big for some of those role player guys. I honestly think mm. that. You know, the, the, the moment was too big. And I think for Aiden to be able to be guarded by those small guys and stuff like that, that probably drove Monty crazy. You know what I'm saying? You that big and you let these guys out rebound, you push out the paint and stuff like that. That can't happen. And I think if he was if he would have played big in the series, the outcome might have been different. I thought he would have a big series, to be honest with you, Jack, for everything you said. I mean, he's big. He had a great season. I expected him to somewhat – I mean, he's not like a dominant type dude, but I expected him to kind of have his way – down there, um, and he didn't. Mavs will face the Warriors in the Western Conference Finals. Last time these two teams met in the playoffs, you were in your bag. 2007, we believe team. Uh, they were the number one seed. We were the number eight seed. First number eight seed to knock a number one seed off in a seven-game series format in NBA history. What are some of the storylines in this uh, this matchup, Jack? Luke and Steph. I don't think Dallas has enough to keep up with um, Golden State is scoring wise, but I know for a fact that Draymond can't guard Luca, so he's gonna have to guard somebody else. And I'm pretty sure they might. I don't know. Luca's known to win a lot of games by himself, man. He, he's one of those guys that's been playing crazy in the playoffs, and I don't think it's gonna stop. I think he's gonna have some big games in this series, but I just think that the experience and and Golden State is the deeper team. And I don't think uh, go, um, Dallas will be able to keep up with the scoring, but it's going to be a great series, bro. I, we got to get to yeah, one of those games. Definitely. I mean, Luke is incredible. I mean, if you think about what he's done, this kind of reminds me of um, when AI pulled that 76ers team to the finals against the Lakers and, and stole game one. And, uh, and I say this with all due respect to the, to the rest of the guys on both teams. There's just – no one with, you know, the, the, the accolades on, on Lucas' team or, 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 you know, just the resume that you see the rest of these remaining teams have. Lucas the only all-star on the team. No one else mm-hmm. has any other type of accolades. And what he's been able to do with those guys, again, and I say that with all due respect because, you know, Brunson stepped up. Brunson's about to get paid this summer. But these other guys just stepped up for the moment. And, again, I, I, I take my hat off to Jay Kidd because I think he had a lot to do. You could tell he was jumping up and down on the sidelines during the game. Mm-hmm. Like, he was very into this, and I think his players fed off that. Now, I think this Warriors series, series is going to be a great series. Um, and I agree. I think the Warriors experience and depth is going to help them out. But it's going to be a shootout. Shit, I can see it go six or seven games. I know I'm going to have to pick which number uh, later in the series. But I don't think there's anyone in the world that can guard Luka. You're going to have to run different schemes and, and give him different looks. Um, but he's a bad motherfucker, man. And to think this dude is only 23, he's really just scratching the surface when it comes to the NBA game. But he's been a pro for a long time. So it's going to be scary hours. But I still have the Warriors um, edging Dallas out. But it's been a great I want to ask you something, Jack, because I, I got to do ESPN in a little bit. And they sent me a question that says, out of these four players, rank them in order that are left in the playoffs. Steph, Tatum, Luka, Jimmy Butler. Give me one through four, how you feel those players are. I'm going Luka, Steph, Tatum, Jimmy yeah. Butler. That's exactly how I listed it, too. That's funny you said that. Yeah, I mean, I got it. And, and that's hard to say. I mean, Steph is a motherfucker, man. With the, you, know, we, you know how much we love Steph, but I feel like Luka right now out of that group, and that's saying a lot because Tatum is a monster, too. Jimmy Butler's a two-way monster, but I don't think yeah. – I mean, Luka – different. 
Yeah, right. And he sh- and that's kind of been the knock on him is he hasn't been able to knock that get through that first round. So it, to me, it's hard to say. Luca, talent wise, where would you put where, where would you put him? I mean, again, I don't want to overhype it. It's one playoff run, but Luca's been Luca, and I feel like he's only going to get better. He's in the conversation with Giannis and KD. MB, he's top Joe, five like, player in the league. You, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Whoever you have is your top five player in the league. Lucas got to be in it. Mm-hmm. No question. Now moving on to the East. My prediction came true. Celtics in seven. They were able to move past Milwaukee. Giannis, great fucking series. But I think at the, at the beginning I said that it, this was just going to be too hard to do without mm-hmm. Middleton. Uh, Middleton's not flashy. He's not loud he just goes out and does what he's like a 20 point six rebound five assist guy and normally down the stretch of all the games it's Middleton and Giannis running their pick and rolls and Giannis is a mm-hmm. dynamic roller and then Middleton can get that mid-range bag and knock down three so I think this was tough to overcome talk to me about this series Jack and and, and what stood out to you the most well what stood out to me the most when a lot of people talking about yeah with that Middleton and that was a big miss, but you can't go into the, the these games in the playoffs with this team without having Middleton and I not having P.J. Tucker. That was two big parts of their team. You know what I mean? Now, now they're putting so much pressure on Giannis and try to put Bobby Portis in a P.J. Tucker position. That's not that, that is he's not built for mm-hmm. it. They thought Grayson Allen was going to be that because he 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 was he was having he was having a little success during the season, but he stunk it up during the playoffs. He was terrible and 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 he didn't show up. So. It was just too much pressure on Greek Freak, man. He, he still played well, didn't shoot well in the last game, but he still was dominant in the series. But like you said, just the combination of Brown and Tatum playing well together, uh, that whole team with the best defense in the league, they they physical. It was just going to be hard for them to do without Milton, like you said, though. Shout out Grant Williams. He had a big series uh, in Game 7 scoring. Uh, Seven threes, most in uh, Game 7 history. But he played great defense, or as good as defense as you can play on Giannis. Giannis is, you know, to me, him and Luka, you throw a couple other guys, probably the most unstoppable players um, in the league. And and Grant made him work. Come fourth quarter, Luka looked like he was eating powdered donuts, how he used to look Mm -hmm. when you came into practice. Luka was tired Mm -hmm. as shit. He had that white (laughs) shit in the corner of his mouth, and you see it on TV, and you'd be wiping your shit. Like, ah, you got the powdered donuts. Uh, But Luka played his (laughs) ass off, man. (laughs) Luca did everything he uh, excuse me not Luca uh, Giannis did everything he absolutely could do on both ends of the floor he was just uh, gas so uh, moving on to the conference finals we got the Heat the number one seed who I kind of feel how like has been overlooked all season and now they're in the Eastern Conference Finals and a tough young Boston team what are some of the matchups that you feel like are going to stand out Jack well one Lowry has to be Lowry needs to play uh, we don't know if he's going to be back and I think that's going to be a big uh, factor in this series, his experience, him, uh, Jimmy being able to play off the ball, and the way Lowry is known how to make plays in these big games, I think he'll be big to have on the court. But Boston, man, I just think, you know, they kind of rolling right now. They was able to give Williams some rest. He might come back and play the rest uh, the, the, uh, in the East Conference Finals. So I, like, I, I, I hate to go against Jimmy and them because I know they're going to be just as physical as Boston. But I think Boston is just on another level this year, and, and I think it's their time. They, they These guys had experience with big losses in the playoffs to Braun and as, when they were young. And I just think just it's, it's just their time right now. Jason Tatum is on another level. Robert Williams, I hated to even see him playing in the first round, to be honest with you, Jeff, because he had that meniscus injury. And although meniscus is the least of the serious severities as far as tearing ligaments in your knee, uh, it's still a surgery that it's surgery, and this dude was back, and I don't want to put dates on it because I'm I'm not, but he was back really fast, and I know I had a very mm-hmm. similar surgery when I was with the Lakers, and it took me like almost seven weeks to come back. But then even when I was back, it was, the swelling was out of control. It hurt like a motherfucker. It, I I really couldn't do nothing. So I was really surprised to see him out there game one. I'm glad that he's sitting down on to me. I just hope he gets all the way healthy. Fuck coming back right now because I feel like he has a really bright future. And you just don't want right. to do that. It kind of, you know, reminds of remember when Brandon Roy did that shit. Brandon Roy came back in mm-hmm. like, what, two weeks off a of knee surgery or off a of scope or something. I'm just like, man, don't let – don't get hyped into doing that kind of shit, man. You got a long career. But to, the, uh, to this matchup, yeah, Miami is – 
you know, they remind me of uh, just just a well-oiled machine, a San Antonio. You know, Spolster done, mm-hmm. has done a great job of just being able to plug and play, uh, making up for injuries. You know, Lowry hasn't been playing, I think, he playing very well, but I agree 100% with his experience and his ability to let guys play off the ball. But his numbers are like 6, 5, and 4, if I'm not mistaken. So that mm-hmm. his numbers haven't been overwhelming, but I think his experience alone, his veteran leadership, his ability to play big in big games – uh, Miami's going to need that. Butler's been playing incredible. I haven't seen Jimmy Butler play this good maybe since the bubble. This dude's been doing absolutely everything for this team, uh, holding them afloat. Uh, you know, Bam's going to be Bam. It'll be interesting to see. Boston's defense is tough. And, and what I love about it, obviously, Marcus Smart, uh, Defensive Player of the Year. But Tatum and Brown really get after it on defense. These dudes are fighting mm-hmm. over screens. They don't lay on screens. They don't call out switches. These motherfuckers are working on both ends. And those are your most, most talented offensive players. So I really appreciate and respect that. But I agree with you, man. It's To me, it's about who's hottest at the right time, who's playing well. Both these teams are playing well. But I'm going to take Boston um, just because I just really believe in Tatum. I really believe in Tatum. I think, you know, he's mm-hmm. the future of this, one of the faces of this league in the future. And then now it's his time to show it. Next up on the radar, presented to you by DraftKings. Uh, Jack, they want us to try to predict the winner of the series and how many games. And we're going to give the, the fans the odds first. First, we're going to take the Warriors over here. So the Warriors to win in seven games would be a plus 300 for them to win in six games, plus 450 for them to win in five games, plus 330. For them to win in four games, plus 650. For the Mavericks to get it in seven is plus 750. For them to win in six games, plus 550. For the Mavericks to get it in five is plus 1600. And for the Mavericks to make the biggest upset in history and sweep the Warriors in four, it would be a plus 2500. Jack, tell me who you got in this series and in how many games. Well, I would say it matters how the, how they fared in regular season because when we played when we played against Dallas in regular season, we beat them every time, and that's why we were so confident playing them in the playoffs. But um, the Warriors didn't have the three-headed monster. None of, none of their big three was playing around the time. They wasn't together, so I'm still going with the Warriors. I think I'll go with the Warriors in six, man. Plus mm. 450. You know what I'm saying? That 450 mm-hmm. better look good for boys. That's what I wanted to do, too. But I don't want to take the same bet as you. So I'm going to go Warriors in seven at mm. plus 300. I think it's going to be a good series. Still good Warriors got to play a lot better, man. They can't turn the ball over the way they were doing because uh, Luka's going to make them pay. Jordan Poole's going to be big in this series. Jordan Poole? Who you, oh, that's a good big. question. Who you think is going to be? Who's going to be the X factor for both teams? So you got Jordan Poole for the Warriors. Who do you think the X factor for uh, Dallas is? Brunson. Brunson, got to yeah. score well. Yeah, they've been. Uh, he played Brunson and Dinwiddie a lot together, and uh, also played uh, Dinwiddie and Brunson with Luca off the ball against the Suns. Mm. So that'll be good to see. Uh, next up, Celtics and the Heat. For the Celtics to win it in seven, plus 500. For the Celtics to win it in six is plus 280. For the Celtics to win it in five is plus 600. And for the Celtics to sweep, plus 900. Let's go mm. over to Miami. For Miami to win it in seven is plus 350. For Miami to win it in six is plus 750. For Miami to win it in five is plus eight fifty, and for Miami to sweep these motherfuckers, which ain't gonna happen, is plus eighteen hundred. Jack, who you got in the series? How many games? And give me the X factor for both teams. Okay, Celtics beat them twice this year out of three games in the regular season. I'm going to go Celtics in six plus two eighty. You keep taking that 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 safe six. That's where I was going again too. So I'm gonna take you Celtics. Did. So stop asking me first. Yeah, no, I'm not. <laughs> it's, it's your floor. I'm gonna take Celtics in seven at plus five hundred. Uh, X factor for both teams. Start with Miami. X factor for me is Jalen Brown. Uh, we know Tatum gonna bring it. We know he's gonna play well. When they get to thirty and thirty and twenty five thirty like nights like that, they hard to beat. Uh, Miami. Um, it's going to all boil down to Jimmy Butler, man. I point, point blank. He he has to play on both ends of the ball, but I think this this series, he has to concentrate on scoring uh, just as well as defense. Uh, a lot of times he put more focus on defense and try to make plays 
and let other guys score. But this, but this series, the Eastern Conference Finals, he got to be that 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 guy on both ends of the floor. So I'm gonna go with Jimmy Butler and um, Jalen Brown. Yeah, Jimmy's got to hydrate because he was killing last round. I want to say he averaged like he led the second round in scoring, if I'm not mistaken, around somewhere around 31, 32 points a game. So he was definitely putting uh, numbers up on the offensive end this next round. So they're going to need exactly the same in this conference finals to advance to the finals. Closing thoughts. Jack, I heard something. I hope it's just a rumor. Andre Aiden only played 17 minutes last night. No minutes in the fourth quarter. When uh, they talked to Coach Monty Williams, they said it was an internal issue. Jack, I heard that Monty asked him if he wanted to play, and he said no, and Monty sat him the rest of the game. So I, I can't confirm if that's fact or not. I'm just putting it out there. I almost feel bad putting it out there because it, it sounds absolutely crazy. I hope it's not the case, but you never know. What do you think what, uh, is up next for Aiden? They didn't max him last year. Uh, they're going to throw him an offer this year he probably won't be happy with. You don't play in game seven. You don't dominate in this series like they needed you to dominate. I want to hear your take on this. This should be good. Well, big fella, <laughs> your time has ran out in Phoenix, bro. Uh, if they wanted to pay you, they would have been paid you. Fact. That's I first and foremost. First and foremost, they would have been paid you. Second, right. me, Matt, and probably your whole team just knew this would be the series where you will be dominant. Dallas don't have nobody that's athletic like you, that that is strong as you, that has great that can even stop you on that end. And for him to not dominate in this series, for Phoenix to have a great season, to win what sixty four games, and 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 not make it to the Western Conference Finals, I mean that, that that's a letdown. But he did not step up, and for him, if if he said that he did not want to go in the game in the game seven, that's not a good look. And I mean, I don't know if any team will want to deal with that. Right at this point, you know what I'm saying? You this is the big game, game seven, and you say you don't want to go in. That's a that's worse than a bad look, man. That, that's that's worse than getting kicked out the game seven. Yeah. That's uh that's tough. And again, I hope that's just rumor. Um and if it is, I, I apologize for even bringing it up, but that's I've heard that from two different people. So, um we'll see if that's the case. And I agree with you. If they want, if they were going to max you, they would have maxed you. I don't, I think they still want him back, but it's not going to be in for a max number. And, you know, to be honest with you, with all due respect, again, it's, you know, he's not putting up max numbers. He's solid, very solid, uh, very talented, young, uh, big, but yeah, it kind of just is what it is. I mean, you pretty much said it all. So we'll see what happens. Uh, you know, I just CP found a back. trade for him. <laughs> Who are you trading? Trading him for Julius Randle. Julius Randle for him. At least Julius Randle is going to give you something. He's going to play hard. You know what I mean? And then Donovan Mitchell is probably going to go to New York, too. So Donovan Mitchell and Aiden. And, Donovan and, Mitchell and Aiden and in New York boy. would be nice. Go, and, and the young boy. Do Bear. We'll see. Do Do Bear. Rudy <laughs> Do Bear. We see. Hey, man, before we uh, get up out of here, we want to send our thoughts and prayers to Brittany Griner. Um, Vice has a piece coming out on Showtime. Um, about the situation. We want to wish her a safe return whenever that may be, wishing, you know, praying for her family and friends. The WNBA has done a lot uh, of showing love, but Jack, this situation is crazy. We don't have to get too deep into it, man, but, you know, say whatever you want to say about this. Nah, BG, you know, we got love for you. BG is the homie, man, I, and I hate she even yeah. going through any of this, but, you know, she got our support. She got a lot of support, man, just – Herb and get free BG, man. Let BG get home soon. Uh, quick to her family, man. Enough is enough. Yeah, again, I mean, we're praying for you uh, for a safe return. Take a look at this teaser. Vice coming out on Showtime. You know, I'm, I'm, I was scared for her. My stomach dropped. You know, I, like, I teared up. It, it hit hard, and it, and it hit hard because it literally could have been any of us. Brianne January and Kayla McBride have played with and against Griner over the last decade, both at home and abroad. We are constantly coming into different countries and, you know, we're here by ourselves and it just brings us back to, you know, why she was in that situation. Can you talk a little bit about why so many WNBA players do play overseas in the off season? It comes with playing professional women's basketball, just supplement income. That's the hardest thing to think about is that she feels like she has to still be over here. We're talking about Brittany Griner. Like. Exactly. We're talking about BG. We're talking about, you know, like, all-star, you know, USA, gold Olympians. Like, 
It's just, it's crazy to think that she feels like she still has to go over there. This all could have been avoided if we could stay home and make a living in the W. Slam dunk, Brittany Grider. The average WNBA player makes about $120,000 a year in a career that only lasts a few years. Playing abroad lets them make the most of their earning potential. Griner is a top talent, earning the WNBA's max salary of $228,000. But UMMC Ekaterinburg, where she's played since 2014, reportedly pays her $1 million a year. She was arrested while returning to Russia to play. Make sure you guys stay tuned. We have the Forgotten Season Next 75 dropping this Wednesday. And we have a special guest, our brother, Penny Hardaway. Little Penny, helping us bring it to you. What's Burning is available every week on Showtime Basketball YouTube. And on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Show Basketball. Y'all. See y'all next week. This season, I've only invited an elite group of competitors. This will be your biggest competition yet. You don't come to a challenge and not be ready to win. This is the most cutthroat game. Gone are the days of men running the game. Only shooting stars break the The Challenge All-Stars, now streaming exclusively on Paramount+.